All righty. So this is going to be day two of conics. Um, the first problem that we're starting off with, I actually think is a great problem because this kind of summarizes the very first thing that I gave you guys yesterday in your notes. And it's talking about comparing your generator to the central axis. And those were the that we were using to determine what type of conic it was. So if my theta and my alpha, so that was that central axis rotation, and this was that generator, the line that was along the conic. So if they're equal to each other, then we would have a parabola. So if my theta is equal to 90, that is my circle. If alpha is less than theta is less than 90, this is an example of an ellipse. And this last one, when we have zero degrees is less than or equal to theta is less than my alpha, this would be an example of a hyperbola. So these are your four types of conics. And so in this question, they ask specifically, um, what describes theta when an ellipse is created from the intersection of a plane and a double napped cone? So this intersection of the plane and the double down cone, that's the generator that we're talking about. So in this case, we're talking about an ellipse. It's this equation right here. So good little review. So you guys again can piece it together, which goes with what. And then I have two circle problems today and I have two parabolas. Um, you guys tend to really do well with circles. Um, so I'm gonna kind of go through these ones a little quick. Um, so what are we given? We're given our center. So we have some center point. And again, I like to draw a little diagram to go with things for you. So this is my center. It's going to be at 2, negative 3. Oops, sorry. My center is at 2, 1. And then I have a point that's going to be at 2, negative 3. And this is a point that's going to be on my circle. So my circle is going to go around that center, something like that. You guys get the idea. So in order to create an, an equation for a circle, remember equation for a circle is going to be some x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to my r squared. So I need to figure out what is my h and my k. These are the things I need, my h and my k and I need my r or my r squared. So I know my center, so this is my h and k value. I already know now my h and my k value, so I have x minus two squared, plus I have y minus one squared is equal to, I need to figure out that r squared. So I already know I could get rid of these two equations, right? Because those are plus in the middle. And my formula is always x minus. In these case, it's a two and a one. So it's just x minus two. My r though, what is r? So that's the tricky part because remember, r is talking about the radius here. And I need to figure out, well, what is the length of that radius? They didn't tell me what it is. But I know if I have two points, I could find the distance, the length of this radius here, I can find the distance between the two points. Remember our distance formula D is equal to the square root of X1, or you could do X2 minus X1 squared plus Y2 minus Y1 squared. So that distance, or we could just call it our radius. So it's that radius value is the distance formula. So that's just my radius, however you wanna look at it. Um, so my R is going to equal, and you could choose whichever one, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna say that this is X1, Y1, then this would be X2, Y2. It doesn't matter which ones you label what, as long as your ones are together and your twos are together. Again, you'll get the same answer in the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do, it's gonna be two minus two squared plus, it's going to be one minus a negative three squared is gonna give me r is equal to the square root. This is just gonna be a zero, right? Cancels out. This is going to be four squared. So r is going to be equal to four squared is 16. So it's gonna be the square root of 16, which is just gonna be r is equal to 
four. So if I want R squared, then R squared is 16. And this is the answer we're looking for. So notice they had 16 and they had four. So they try to trick you because you solve for your R and you get four, but you have to remember that you need to square it. So the correct answer is this one right here. So don't fall for that because that is an answer choice. When you solve for that, if you don't realize you need to square it, you would get the wrong answer. This equation here or this um, problem here, I need to figure out well, where my center is. And I look and I have two center choices. It's going to be at a negative four, positive one or positive four, negative one. And I can easily see that it's going to have to be my positive four, negative one. That's going to be in the center. So I have that my HK, this is four, negative one. There's my H, there's my K value. So when I plug it in, I should have X minus four squared plus it's going to be y minus, remember it's y minus a negative one squared, but equal my r squared. So that negative and negative turns into a positive. So that's where you get x minus four squared plus my y plus one squared is equal to, so I'm at one of these two choices. So I need to figure out, well, what is my radius? I could count this, it's on the graph and these are nice pretty values that I could see that this is right on the graph and I could go ahead and I could just count it. I don't need to go ahead and use the distance formula because I can see that this is going to be one, two, three, four, five units away that my radius is equal to five. But remember this is R squared. So it's not going to be the value of five. It's five squared, which is 25 and there's your answer. So again, don't fall for that same thing as above. They gave you R and R squared as an answer choice. Questions before I move on to my parabolas. All righty then, let me go ahead and flip. Um, I can't stress this enough and I tried to point it out yesterday that when you guys are given these problems, do a quick little sketch so you can visualize what is going on. That is the easiest, easiest way I think to solve these problems. And so I have a equation that has a vertex here at zero five and a focus. So they gave me my vertex and my focus. And if I want to, for graphing reasons, I know that three halves is 1.5. Sometimes it might be easier to look at it that way. So when I go over here, I'm going to go like this. I'm going to draw a quick little sketch. I'll draw it off to the side right here. And I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five. So five, three, one. I'll just label a couple of them. Um, one, two. OK, so I know that my vertex is at 0, 5. So 0, 5 is my vertex. My focus is going to be at one and a half, five. So I'm gonna go one and a half, five. This is going to be my focus. And I know that inside, or my focus is always inside my graph. So I know that my parabola is gonna to have to open to the right. It's gonna to have to open to the right. If it's opening to the right, then I know it's gonna be an X equals equation or the X term is a piece that's not being squared. So I know that. This also tells me that I know my H and my K value because it's my vertex. It's always gonna be my HK. So I know because it opens to the right that I'm gonna use the equation Y minus K squared is equal to four P X minus H. I like to use the one with the P value versus the A. Um, I usually will default to that one every time because when I look here, if I know my vertex and my focus or my vertex and my directrix, I know my P value because P is always the distance between the two. So if this is here at zero and this is at 1.5, then I know that P has to be a value of 1.5 or you could write it as three halves, whatever you want. So I know P just from my graph. I could count that, I could figure that out. And the distance between my vertex and my focus is my P value. So I know my H and my K, so I'm at Y minus, now be careful, 
this is my k, so it's not the first one here. So I want to match it up. It's y minus 5 squared is equal to 4 times I said p is 1.5. And this is going to be x minus my h is 0. I could clean this up. So I end up with y minus 5 squared. 4 times 1.5 is 6 x minus zero is just x. So this is a valid answer. This isn't wrong, but I notice it doesn't match any of mine. That's because they have it as x equals. That's okay. I just want to switch into that same format. So when I do this, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to divide by six. And when I do that, I get x is equal to, and I could just pull the six out in front. It's just one six and it's y minus five squared. Now something that I need you to be careful about, one of the big red flags is going to be, is this a positive or is it a negative? Now if it opens to the right, I'm always going to make sure that it's a positive. If it would have opened to the left, so if it opened left, you would need to have a negative. So you need to make sure to pay attention to that at the end. So in this case, it's just going to be this one right here. So very similarly, if it opens up, it would be positive. If it opened down, then you need to make sure that this value, this A value or that P value, doesn't matter which way you're looking at it, would have to be positive or negative. And my last one. Okay, again, I'm all about the graphs. So I'm given, in this case, my focus, and I'm given my directrix. Ooh, ah. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's take a quick little look at this. So if I go ahead and I graph this right here, um, go down. So I need to go to um, negative six. I'm going to actually go to x is equal to negative 12. So one, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. We'll count by twos. Negative eight, negative six, negative four, negative two. And I need to go up to positive 12. So we're going to go two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. So 10, eight, six, four, two. Again, I just am trying to get something on the paper, some type of sketch. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I want to visualize what's going on so I can kind of see which direction is my graph going to open. How is this going to look? So I have a focus at negative 6, positive 12. So here's my focus. Negative 6, positive 12. I have a directrix at x is equal to negative 12. Remember my directrix? That's a line. It's an equation of a line. It's either going to be an x equals or a y equals. So this is my directrix. And this is x is equal to negative 12. What's directly in the middle of these two? So it's along the line of my focus here. What's directly in between these two is my vertex. My vertex is smack dab in the middle. So when I go to figure that out, if this is at negative six and this is at negative 12, it has a distance of six, right? So I need to go three over and I would be in the middle. So my vertex is going to be here. And that point would be at negative nine, 12. So I'm moving three. If I'm at here at negative six, I'm going to go seven, eight, and here at my nine. So that's three away, right? This is a distance of three. And this right here is a distance of three. And what is that three representing? Your p value, right? That's my p value because it's the distance. Your vertex is p away from the directrix, p away from the um, focus. It's always going to be the case. So without even really trying, I found my p value. Okay, so what is this graph gonna look like? If this is my vertex, if this is my vertex, which direction is it gonna open? Well, remember, the focus has to be inside the parabola every time. It's gonna be inside the parabola. The directrix should never touch the graph. The directrix is, your graph's always gonna open away from the directrix. So if my directrix was going this direction, and my focus was here. Oops, can't see that. So if my directrix was going this direction and my focus was here, then the, my graph would have to open up. So it's always going to be the case where my graph is going away from my directrix. 
the focus is always inside. So I need to come up with this equation. And again, this happens to be the same equation as above. I wish it was a different type. It's just the way the problems came out. So it's opening to the right. So if it opens right, then I'm gonna be using my y minus k squared is equal to 4p x minus h. So I know right here, my h and my k value, so I'm gonna plug it in. So it's y minus my k is 12 squared is equal to four. Remember we said that our p is three and it's gonna be x minus, in this case, it's a negative nine. So I have y minus 12 squared is equal to 12 and this becomes a negative and negative makes it a positive x plus 12. And I look to see, does it match? Remember, if it opens right, I know that my A is positive, so I'm good there. And I go ahead and I don't even, it's already set up for me in this case. Remember I said this would have been fine, that's acceptable. It's just your answers weren't written that way. In this case, they are written this way, so you don't have to divide or do anything else. So it just depends on how they give you your answer choices. And yes, that means I will. Um, so when I look here and go ahead and I match my answers, Again, this would be if it opened left. So I need to pay attention to that. Okay, so how did I come up with my vertex? So remember, my vertex is in the middle of my direct shift and my focus. No matter what, it's always in the middle because it's P away. So my focus, this distance right here from my focus to my directrix is six. So if I need to split it between the two of them, where's the halfway? I would divide it by two and I get a value of three. So that means that it's gonna be three away from my focus. So if I'm here, my focus, my X value here was negative six. Oops, negative six. And I would go to negative seven, negative eight, negative nine. And that's a distance of three. Over here, if I'm at negative 12 to negative nine, that's my distance of three. So I split that in half because it's halfway between the two pieces. It's always gonna be the case. So if this was a value of nine in between, then I would have to split it in half and my vertex would be right in the middle of the two. Um, the other thing to pay attention to for this is that your vertex is always gonna be on the same line as your focus. So if I look here, if my focus is here, then my vertex would be here. It'd have to be on the same line. So they're always gonna be on that same line, whether it's gonna be if my um, focus, if my problem is opening up and down, then they're gonna be on that same vertical line. If it's going left or right, it's gonna be on that same horizontal line. That's always the case. Um, any other questions? So tomorrow's lesson is gonna be sent out in the morning. Um, office hours will be miss with Mrs. Calloway between one and three. You could check in anytime you want. If you have any questions, she'll be there the whole time. And she just says open office hours. So it's not going to be um, with me at all tomorrow, but I will send out a video that I've already pre-done um, that will go over quiz problems. If you have anything else, any other questions, of course, you can still always reach out to me on Remind. Um, I'm here for you guys for whatever you guys need. Um, Otherwise, you guys have a fabulous day. Oh, wait, I have a, another question. Huh. Um, let, me, let me stop the recording really quick.